video cast is for uh, basic scheduling within the Woodman Controls Niagara Framework System. Uh, this is going to give a brief overview on how to do basic weekly scheduling with multiple zones and multiple schedules. First thing is where to find the schedules in our system, and it's pretty simple. Right up here at the top, there's a button called Schedules, and if you click Schedules and bring it up, there's typically by default out of the when it comes out of Woodman Programming, you'll have a Schedule 1, Schedule 2, and a 24-hour schedule. This customer has actually made two more schedules in there, and there's really no limit to the amount of schedules other than graphic space, and we can always make more graphics to account for more schedules. Um, the, the, the typical schedule mode, there's two types. There's easy, either a Boolean schedule, which would be just occupied and unoccupied, or there's going to be an enumerated schedule, which we're going to demonstrate here, which there's multiple modes of operation. Multiple modes are going to be occupied, unoccupied, standby, and bypass. Occupied mode is pretty simple. It's just when there's occupancy, when you expect people to be there in the zones, and everything will follow occupied schedules and set points. Unoccupied is referring to nobody being there, so typically through the middle of the night, there's nobody there, nothing going on. No ventilation, none of that kind of thing is going on. Standby mode would be typically if you have an outside source to tell you occupancy. For example, an occupancy sensor or, uh, or a light switch or something along those lines to tell you when, the, when there's people in the space. It'll maintain slightly setback temperatures off of occupied and when it senses occupancy, it will go occupied and go to normal occupied set points. And then bypass. Bypass mode is if the building is unoccupied, middle of the night, somebody comes in the middle of the night and needs to use their computer, they can push the override button on the thermostat, and the building will come occupied and come to a normal temperature. So in order to just demonstrate this very basically, keep in mind what the default schedule is in here. So when you look on the properties page, the default output we have set for unoccupied in this case, which is why all the areas that are white don't show any kind of schedule. They just show unoccupied. That is the default. There are typically, well in this case on the enumerated one, there are four modes of operation, occupied, unoccupied, bypass, and standby. They're all represented by a number, which you really don't need to remember, but those are the modes that it's working in. So if I want to add a schedule, it's as simple as click and drag. So I'm going to drag, and you'll see it actually added this as an unoccupied schedule, which is not what you want it to be. If I was trying to make that occupied, I need to make sure the event that's selected is selected for occupied, and then you'll see what it says right inside there. If you wanted to, for example, make your building in standby mode during the day because you have an occupancy sensor, you do standby, and then possibly when you know there's going to be someone there in the evening, you could make that mode occupied. So in this case, the building would be unoccupied until 6 a.m. It would come in and go to standby mode and would only go occupied when there was an occupancy sensor. If equipped, keep in mind, a lot of buildings don't have those, and then at 6 o'clock it would go full-blown occupied. Then all you have to do is hit save, and that is pushed down to the controllers. The next step is uh, looking at the schedules in the zones. So now we've seen how to identify this, and we've named our zones, so schedule 1, 2, 3. Uh, just keep in mind those numbers. If we go back to the floor plan, and we're going to go to first floor and look at one of the zones here. So in this particular zone, we're showing occupied right now. On the set points tab, on pretty much every piece of equipment you'll see, Unless it's controlled a different way, there'll be a schedule setup. And the schedule setup is going to let you select from one of those four, five, three, ten, however many schedules you have in your system, you can select what schedule you want that system to work on. In this case, they wanted it to work on the velvet schedule. So whatever they have set for their velvet schedule is when this room, this particular room is going to become occupied. So this is when that room is going to run. So I hope that makes sense. If it needs to be changed, again, 
it's simply click, select something different, make sure you push your enter key, and that will run on that schedule. Also, no matter what schedule it's on, you're always able to override these zones from here as well. So you can override your zone to unoccupied if you need to. That will ignore all natural commands or anything like that. Finally, since there's a rooftop serving this piece of equipment, and a lot of times we have sourced equipment, starts with a basic piece of equipment such as a VAV, and then there needs to be another piece of equipment running in order for that unit to run, we have the capability on this floor, for example, to show a whole bunch of zones, mod 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this case, all need to have Air Handler 2 or Rooftop 2 running. These could all be set on a different schedule, so we may have one zone come occupied first thing in the morning and another one come occupied at noon. On rooftop two, again, on the set points tab, there's air source run control, and I'll do another video that's more advanced on how this works, but run on request. Every time a zone is requesting for the unit to run, it'll come back to this block, be added up, and if it's more than the number of that are required to start the unit, which in this case is 0.08, and if it's less than 0.06, or really if they have more than one zone requesting heating, or they have more than one unit requesting air, the unit's going to start, run, and satisfy that unit. So that's how the scheduling works on there. And again, I'll do a more advanced video on how the air sourcing, source, air sourcing portion of that works. So I hope that gets across what we wanted to do in scheduling. If you have any questions, you can always contact Woodman Controls. Uh, thank you for your time.